today I am going to be working on a 1999 Honda Odyssey with P0740, which is torque converter clutch circuit open. I've been reading about this on the internet and I think I have an idea of what the problem is. So the problem is very likely that my transmission is shot, but there's also a chance that I just haven't been changing my ATF fluid frequently enough. And there are two filters that need to be checked. One is down here underneath the linear solenoid and another is way down there, really can't show it to you, um, which is the uh, lockup solenoid. So first thing I have to do is remove this battery to get some access. Battery's out, but uh, this tray is, is not strictly necessary. I think I could do it, but I need to get in here to get these six bolts out, and then I need to get several things out here. I think this tray is just gonna be in my way, so I'm, I may regret this later, but I'm gonna to try to take out this tray. It looks like there's four bolts here. One, two, three, four, 13 millimeter bolts. I finally got this thing out. It took a lot more effort than I thought. First of all, you've got these um, two connectors here that slide onto these posts here. Those are no big deal. They have little plastic tabs on the bottom. You press the tabs and they slide right out. The bolts, the three bolts here. Uh, here and here are easy to get to. This fourth bolt back here can only be reached from the underside of the car. Don't even try getting it from the top. Um, the other pain was the connectors, electrical connectors here, here, and here. Even knowing how these connectors operate, I, I found it very difficult to, to work. Let me, let me go down here and show you. All right, so here are the two connectors, one and two, that are maybe a little bit easier than the others to see. And you can see there's a little tab here. This tab, and I actually broke part of the plastic, the tab holds it in and it needs to go away from, the tab needs to go in, away from the wire. So by pressing this tab backwards, it lifts up a little clip. You can maybe see in there and that allows it to slide free, but they're just a real pain. So um, this one here, same deal. This is the back side of it. You can flip it around to be the, there's that clip right there. So if you push the clip towards the wire, then it, no, actually it looks, oh, it's, see, this is the problem. Now that I get a really good look at it, you actually, yeah, it needs to go away from the wire pull away from the wire and that releases the clip. Okay, so now we finally got our our good access here. So let me clear out a few more things and all. I've cleared some of the wires up and away so that we can get a better view in here. This right here is the linear solenoid. Great view, great access. Now you can see the two solenoids here, and you can see that one of them has a little bit of corrosion on it. It's probably not a good sign. I probably need to replace those. But underneath these six bolts here, one, two, and then there's three, four, and then two in the back. Um, I lift this solenoid up, and there's a filter I'm going to be clearing, in, um, clearing out. And then this dipstick is in the way. Let me get this out of here. So behind, behind this bracket here is one of the two solenoids for the other block I need to pull. And I'm probably gonna need to pull away this um, tube of uh, radiator fluid here. And I definitely need to remove this harness block here. I think I may start with uh, removing the harness block. Here's another tricky electrical connector that I wanted to show you. Okay, so this one here is the electrical connector for the lockup solenoid. And there are two ways you can do this. Either you press on the back tab and pull this section back, or you pull on this tab this way, and you can pull this whole connector out. Pulling this one back is difficult because, I don't know if you can see it, 
but there's a little notch right here. And so you're trying to pull this connector into that notch and it's just not gonna work. You have to pull this connector away from the wall per se to pull this out. Um, but either one of those options will work for you and then you can get these connectors out of here. I just connected the top radiator hose, or actually it's not the top, it's actually the bottom radiator hose, and uh, about a cup of fluid or so came out, so you'll want to have a little something like this pan here to catch that, and it's still dripping out, so I'm probably going to put a little rag in there as well. So on this harness here, there are one, two, three clips around the back side holding it down and I, I've not been able to figure out how to release these properly. I ended up breaking this one. You can see that there is actually a lip. The plastic tab comes down, there's a lip that sticks out which blocks it from passing this bar. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be any way to release that bar other than breaking the clip. So I think you should be able to just pry a screwdriver in here and free it up, but I haven't been able to do it yet without breaking it. So I'm going to try again. If not, we'll just have to break them and then tape the thing shut. Okay, so after all that work, it turns out I didn't even need to open this harness. I think the video photos I saw, maybe it's for a different model. In the 99 Honda Odyssey, ah, there's a bolt right back here. I removed this bolt now. That bolt holds this entire uh, harness assembly here. And then the entire harness assembly slides backwards and then up. Now, that's still not completely removed, but at least should give me enough flexibility to uh, get in here and work better on this solenoid here. So, uh, the next step is to remove the lockup solenoid. There are three bolts that hold it. Here's one of them right here. This bolt's already been removed. I can take that out. Uh, the second one is pretty easy as well. The third one is just about impossible. You see the angle at which I've got this wrench? That's using an articulating joint trying to reach the third one. That's the only angle I could get it. I had to use like a short, like a three inch extension. The longer extension wouldn't work. Um, I can't really show you much more than that until I, I'm done. I'll take it out and I'll show you the joint. Here's a good view of the joint. Now you can't see the bolt, but you can see the bolt on the left here where the first one goes. And you can imagine it's on the opposite side. And then I've got this wrench angled up at this funny angle here to reach it. Okay, so here is the solenoid. This is the uh, lockup solenoid. Um, we've got this gasket here, which is pretty well adhered in there. The main thing I'm looking at is these two grills here. This one, this one looks pretty clean. This one has got a lot of junk in it, although it's not as bad as I would have thought. I'm not sure if that's really a problem or not. Let's go ahead and start. It's not too bad. So I'll work on cleaning this out a little more and see what I got. Okay, so this is how you test these solenoids. So there's this connector on here, and I actually did this test while I was on the car, but it's harder to do it. The results aren't as clear. So what you want to do is you want to connect ground to the body. And the 12 volts I've got hooked up to a small battery here. Do you hear that click? Let me show that to you again. You want to hear that click on one. Almost like a telegraph on the other. And as I'm looking down in these tubes, I can actually see a little bit of movement. Probably impossible for you to see in the camera. So, when I connect, this is connecting this side here. 
Now I should be able to shoot into, let's go into this main tube here. See how forceful that is coming out of there? I'm gonna make sure my glasses are on. Let's try it the other way. Okay, so both of these are working now. And I think the, uh, the performance has actually improved since I've been cleaning these off. They, to start, the click didn't sound as, as solid and I don't think I was getting as much material through. So I think these solenoids are good. Um, here is the, I, I, this gasket's a very expensive gasket. It costs like $40. And the reason why is because it's actually got the filters built in. I wasn't sure if they were built in or separate, but I've cleaned the filters out. This filter here was dirty, but it wasn't completely obstructed. So not, I'm not, I'm not thinking that's really the cause of the problem. Okay, I did a little more research. This pin here is pin number three, and this is the clutch solenoid. So that is the, this one here is the solenoid that controls the clutch, and I think this would be the one that was, would be causing the problem if there was one. And that is the one that was completely clear. This one over here, this is the, um, this is going to be pin one. And pin one controls the shift solenoid valve A. Um, and I didn't have any problems with shifting, so uh, this is the one that was dirty, so I'm a little bit surprised. Um, everything seems to be okay with the clutch solenoid. Another test they want you to run is to check the continuity between the, each pin and ground. And here on one solenoid, you can see it's 19 ohms. It's supposed to be between 12 and 25 ohms. I'm going to switch to the other solenoid. And that is 19 ohms, and that's fine as well. And the fact that they click and seem to work fine is really the, the best judge. Before I put this back in, I want to show you um, a better view of what this looks like down here. So you see the three mounting bolts and the shelf where that solenoid assembly goes. I removed, there's a hanger that goes right here and to back there. And I removed that because I realized it was going to be even more of a pain to try to install this thing with that in there. But now there's plenty of room. So I'm going to put that back in and then I'm going to work on getting the six bolts off of this one. In removing these six bolts, most of them are pretty easy. I've already got one out here. The others are pretty easy to loosen. This one in the back is really difficult though because this is a hard pipe and so you can't get a socket wrench in there. But I just so happen to have a small um, 10 millimeter socket wrench that just fit in underneath that pipe and a small extension so that I could reach up here and now I can use a regular wrench to remove that last one. Um, but a crow footed wrench I think is the other option that you might need in order to be able to get to that bolt. Here's what the thing looks like underneath the solenoid. There are these three pipes in this order, so the tallest one is closest to you, the shortest one is farthest away from you. And then let's take a look at the actual solenoid. There are two tests to run on this. First is the resistance. So I'm getting 7 ohms right now, it's supposed to be 3 to 10. And I will switch this to the other one. On the left, you want to put the positive. And on the right, you want to put the negative. It doesn't matter for this test, but it will for the next test. Okay, and this, this one's also 7 ohms, so that's good. Now what we need to do is actually put 12 volts on it. Okay. Show you that better. That's this valve right here. If you look down at the bottom, you can actually see it moving. Not a whole lot. Let's switch to the other valve. OK, 
Okay, and watch up here. You can actually see quite a bit of good movement there. So both of these work just fine. And I've cleaned it all out. I think it, the operation is a little bit better now that I've cleaned it all out. Next step is to install this uh, automatic transmission fluid filter. Uh, it usually comes in the brand magnifying, but this is what my local auto store had. And I'm going to be installing it in the line like this. This tube to the right, this is the return line. goes in this orientation with the flow out of the cooler back to the engine. And it comes with regular clamps, but I'm going to be trying to use in, using these fuel clamps, which are supposed to be more reliable. Here's the finished product. It didn't take me very long. Um, the trickiest part was getting those fuel clamps over the hose and then getting the ends of the filter through it because they're just really too small, but I did it, did manage to do it. I also ended up, um, you're going to need to loosen up at least one end of the clamps so that you have enough room to work. And I took out, oh, maybe three inches of the hose in order to make it fit in there just fine. Um, I'm not sure whether I should have these nuts facing up or down because um, I'm not sure which way I'm going to be servicing it in the future, but that's something to think about. So the project is now done. I'm just about to close it up, but I want to just do a review of what I did. So after removing this battery, then we've got the linear solenoids. I removed those, cleaned the screens. I found that the center of the three tubes was slightly blocked. And then I removed the impossible to see and equally difficult to get at um, shift solenoid, lockup solenoid. And uh, I found that um, the lockup solenoid actually looked fine, but the shift solenoid was a little bit blocked. In the end, I didn't really find any smoking guns. Um, I further installed this Wix filter here so that um, any debris which is loosened up by changing the ATF will be caught. I'm just about to do that. I'm, and one thing that the manual doesn't show you is you need to do a triple flush. You need to, to flush, to, to drain it, and then fill it, and then drive it around, get all the gears, including reverse, used. Then you need to change it again, and then repeat one more time. That's because it takes about nine quarts of oil, but you can only drain three at a time. So um, it's important to put this filter in because apparently all that new oil will loosen up any sludge. And, um, yeah, so we're going to put this sucker back together and drive it around and change the oil. I wanted to also mention that after all of this, since I didn't find anything that's clearly gone wrong, um, I may end up replacing both of these solenoids. Unfortunately, each of these solenoids at my local Honda dealer costs over $300. That's, that's just the parts. So it's not something you want to do lightly, but I think that's my next step is to replace the Honda dealer recommends replacing this one, but I actually want to replace both. I noticed that on eBay, you can get them for as little as about maybe 50 to to $100 each from China. These are cheap knockoffs, um, not going to last long, but I think this is, you know, the last hope for this engine. If that doesn't work, then uh, it's a $5,000 transmission replacement. So that would probably be the end of the car. So I'm really hoping that, that, that either what I've done so far or replacing the solenoids will be enough. This is what my ATF plug looks like, and that is quite a bit of gunk on that plug. So that's definitely not good. So I've now performed three drain and fills, and these are samples from each of the three. The first one is pretty much black. Second one is, you can start to see a little bit of light through there, but it's still brown. And the third one is clearly red. Um, it's not quite as bad as it appears because the what I, I actually used a marine um, tool to remove oil directly from the dipstick and so then there's, it got a little bit of contamination with other stuff I had in the jar. But um, yeah, so you can see the dramatic improvement. By the way, using the dipstick method, I found that I couldn't get as much as I could from the drain pan, so that's still the best method. But seeing it as you have to, have to do this three times, um, it does save some time to, if you park the car at an incline pointing downward, then it seems to help suck it out of the dipstick. Um, and I was actually able to get all 
three quarts when I did it that way. Um, so we're pretty much done here. This is how to show you how I changed mine. There's plenty of other videos on how to change the um, oil fluids. I did want to take a quick look at how the how the filter looks from above now. And you can see that we got pretty good access here for repairing it in the future. Um, if I had to do it over, I would actually probably scoot it over another inch closer to the radiator so I'd have access to both of those hoses. Uh, another thing in retrospect, I had some troubles with the third bolt back there um, underneath the, uh, the the metal hose. Turns out that's that's a banjo bolt and, and you can apparently remove that, but I wasn't sure what that was. I didn't want to play with it. That's an easier way to go about doing that. So overall, um, after the test drives, I it, the test the car's running great actually. Um, I drove it for about 70 miles and haven't had a problem. The check engine light did not come on. Uh, the, tra the TCS light didn't come on. Both of those were happening before and I wasn't having hard shifting either. So I, I seem to have at least temporarily solved the problem. I think the things that I was able to do is number one, I cleaned out the filters for those two solenoids. Uh, number two, I changed the ATF. And most importantly, along with number two, is I put in an ATF filter. So because when you put in that new ATF, it apparently loosens up gunk and it sends all that crud through your system. Um, the drain plug in the bottom showed that I definitely had too much crud in the ATF, uh, in, the, in the automatic transmission system. So uh, only time will tell, but at least in the short term, this got me over the hump and uh, hopefully we'll avoid a $5,000 transmission replacement.